Good morning, good afternoon, good evening viewers. So today for this interview we are going to be interviewing a British legend of stage and screen best known for his role most recently in the Harry Potter movies as Uncle Vernon. We're going to be interviewing actor and legend Richard Griffiths. Oh no, wait, sorry. Um, he's dead. So we're going to have to make do with American indie author Richard Griffith. So as many of you know, I'm from Norfolk, England. I suppose you can tell by the accent. I've been sending out interview questions to indie authors from all over the world to try and get them to speak to their audiences, get them to know them better, get to know about their work better, what inspires them and learn about their books and hopefully promote some of my books as we know they're not doing so well which is a problem for a lot of people and i hope you enjoy these interviews you'll probably notice that i'm wearing the same clothes that i've worn in the first video they have been washed it was a couple of days ago i just don't have many sets of clothes and you'll see that behind me here if she will move is For anyone who's interested, Poppy is an 18-month-old Pugglia, and she likes to sleep and bark a lot. So Richard had a few problems getting this video to me. There were some problems with Dropbox and with Google Drive, but I'm very glad that he did eventually get this video to me, and I've had to watch it a few times before commenting on it. He is literally a guy who can speak. Just You could just listen to him speak forever. He is just gone and done a straight 11 minute video and so i just want to let him get on with it and i will just sort of drop in little comments here and there if need be and so ladies and gentlemen this is richard griffiths hello and welcome to my ramblings and rantings i'm author richard griffith author of what are laughingly called books. Now, I'm doing this as an interview for a wonderful little blog, video blog, vlog, whatever you call it this week. So I have a set of questions that I'm supposed to answer. And here they go. What is your name? That's a tough one. I don't write under my real name, although it's close. I write under the name Richard M. Griffin. Why? Simply because I think it flows better than my real name. So, there you go. Let's see, where am I from? I was born just outside of Chicago, on the south side. I lived there for about 20 years. As you can tell, that was a long time ago. I lived in Kodiak, Alaska, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, back to Kodiak, Alaska, down to San Diego, back to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and retired out of the military in 2010 to Anchorage, Alaska. Yes, I live in an igloo. I ride a moose to work. My mail is delivered by Bald Eagle. It's Alaska. As for my age and weight, well, I'm somewhere between born and dead. And as for my weight, I'm not as light as a feather, but I am losing weight. I'm down to about 190 pounds, which is only about 10 pounds hairier than when I retired out of the military, so I'll take it. So I'd like to add in here that I put this question about age and weight in as a bit of an icebreaker. I wasn't expecting people to give a full answer as to the real age and weight. So it was meant to be a bit of a joke. And Richard's taken it just as it was meant to be taken, which is brilliant. I love his response to it. Uh, let's see. Tell us briefly about where you are. I am actually at work. I work for the United States government. I work for the United States Coast Guard. It's a lot of fun. It's a good job. The problem is, right now, they're doing what's called end-of-year accounting, which means all the programs I need to use my to do my job are shut down while they get inventory and accounting straight. 
which means even though I would usually be very busy, I'm kind of stuck right now. The dominoes have to fall in a certain order, and I'm waiting. So, I thought I'd knock this out. So this bit here's interested me because Richard is in the Coast Guard and I have family in America who are retired from the Coast Guard now but obviously used to be in it and they had a fantastic time in the Coast Guard and they must have such a load of stories to tell and I'm sure Richard has stories to tell from it too and this would interest me certainly as a person who does a lot on the water I go kayaking, sailing, rowing, stuff like that but this is more going to, out to sea and stuff like that. He must have had so many great adventures and this would be really interesting to hear about. Also, he's come from a military background and I find that there are so many great stories that can be told by people who were in the military. Not all of them are allowed to be told, obviously, because some of them are secret. But again, this is something that interests a lot of people and I hope you're interested in listening to Richard. So I'll let him continue. Lucky you. Oh, uh, let's see. What made me want to write books? Well, I've always considered myself a good liar. A good storyteller. Which means I only had two real career choices. Writer or politician. And since politics is show business for ugly people, I don't quite qualify. So, I'm writing books instead. I've been doing that for about five years now. And I have to blame a friend of mine, Nathan Hall, for getting me started. He kind of yelled at me, saying that I was always talking about writing a book. Get off my butt and do it. And he introduced me to the NaNoWriMo Challenge, the National Write a Novel in a Month Challenge. So I took it. That was how my first book, Lady Excalibur, got written. I write mostly, mostly science fiction. A little urban fantasy. Well, I have six books in urban fantasy, so I don't know how it's a little. But, a little urban fantasy, mostly sci-fi. I do have a couple of murder mysteries out that take place in New York City. So, I kind of dabble, but mostly I'm dedicated to science fiction. My favorite authors in that gene are people like David Weber, Lawrence Watt Evans, Alan Dean Foster, although lately I have been turned on to the indie scene, and I have found some brilliant authors in the indie scene. J.A. Stone, uh, when you want something a little strange, uh, Masasha Flame when you want a little spicy romance. Can I stop Richard here? He has mentioned some amazing indie authors, one of them being Masasha Flame. And I just wanted to mention that there has been some contact of a possibility of myself and Masasha working together on a project, but nothing has been confirmed yet. But I'm looking forward to that. And I would love to get Masasha on here to do an interview if she is willing to. Larry Yolkum, when you want to be scared out of your seat. I mean, a lot of these uh, very, very talented authors. Much more talented than me, but don't tell them I said that. It'll go right to their heads. My best known work is actually a book about a janitor. My whole military career, I watched the cleaning crew walk into the most secure areas. Nobody asked him any questions. And I thought, if those guys are paying attention to what's around them, they're probably the best informed people on this base. So then the thought was, what if there's a guy like that at Area 51? Just the janitor. But he knows everything. Because he crosses all the department lines and he pays attention. So the next question is, what if he's the last guy left around on a night when everything goes wrong? Janitor 51 was born. It's supposed to be a one-off book. No. Four books later, it's a series. 
I thought I would end it with Janitor 54, but now I have ideas for Janitor 55. Who knows where this is going to end. Please, make it end. Oh, let's see. Actually, my favorite book, though, that I've ever written was my first book, Lady Excalibur. Lady Excalibur was an idea rattling around in my head ever since I watched the movie Excalibur in the 80s. I just thought, at the end of that movie, Arthur said the sword would rise again when needed. I thought, well, what if it's needed today? What if it chooses a woman as its champion? What if Merlin's still around, sort of? Boom. Book. One of the most useful tools an author can use is the question. What if? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if yourself to death? And write. Uh, let's see. More questions. What do I like to eat and drink while writing? Booze. Write drunk, edit sober. Good advice. Am I recognized by my readers in the street while walking the street? Well, a few cars have tried to run me down, so it is possible that they recognize me. Although, I've only ever actually had it happen once. And a guy in Orlando in a bar. Now remember, I live in Anchorage, Alaska. I had traveled to Orlando to go to Disney World. I'm in a bar in Orlando and a guy recognized me. That's the only time that's ever happened. Uh, let's see. Current work in progress. Ooh. Current work in progress is called Magic of the Yarn. The protagonist is an 85-year-old woman out on a mission to save her godson. But everything is not quite as it seems. This is all going to take place mostly in Central America, where the godson has uncovered some kind of ancient force. Ooh. You'll have to read it. Let's see, how have I found the world of indie authors? It is a really good network with a lot of great people, but they need to buy my books. It's just the way it is. I buy a lot of books. They need to buy a lot of books. I need that author rating to go up. Let's see. Is there anyone I would like to thank? I put a small dedication at the front of each book, and everybody in it knows who they are. So I'm not going to talk about it here. They knew who they are. That's all I need. Let's see. What indie authors do I plan to buy next? Mm, probably J.A. Stone. I really enjoy this stuff. Okay, so I think what Richard meant to say here is that the next book he intends to buy is A Midwinter Night's Dream, The Broccoli, The Stilton and The Haystack by Samuel J. White. Then following that, he's going to buy Maria's Photograph by Samuel J. White. And later on in the year when it comes out, he's going to buy Derailed and Dispersed by Samuel J. White. I'm only kidding, he can buy what he wants. Let's see, is there anything I'd like to ask the viewers? What would you like to see me write? What would you like to see written? What story have you not been able to get out of your head? Or maybe you don't feel you can write that you want someone else to write. What book haven't you seen? And if you can't find the book that you want, and no one else will write it, it's going to be up to you. And don't worry about it not being good enough. My stuff sucks. It still sells. But it sucks. Well, at least it sells, Richard. We've got that thing going for you. We don't know whether mine sucks because it doesn't sell. At least yours sells, which is brilliant. You should buy it anyway. Just saying. So, let's end this little interview with saying thank you. 
for letting me do this interview. Also, down there, comment, 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 read, watch, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And remember to look me up on Amazon, that's author Richard Griffith, author of Janitor 51, Lady Excalibur, not quite super. It's one you'll, if you have a weird sense of humor, you will really like that book. And don't forget to buy, subscribe, and thank Sam White, author extraordinaire, for this work. Hope to see you all again. Uh, don't be afraid to look me up on Facebook. I will catch you all later. Goodbye. Thank you to Richard for doing that interview. I really enjoyed it. I hope you've stayed long enough to enjoy it. If you didn't, then you missed out and you're not actually watching this bit right now. But um, thank you again to Richard and thank you to all the other authors that have given me videos so far. I've got one coming up this week, at the beginning of this week, from an author called Ria Otterberg. So I enjoyed Ria's video and I am looking forward to getting it out to you. Just got to do some editing and adding some bits in like I've done with this one, hopefully. And I'm going to be doing some more interviews. I've got loads coming up. Loads of people have promised me that they will do videos for me. I'm also going to be doing some more reviews. I'm currently reading a book by Boyd Craven called One Man's Opus, which is going to be my next review. There's some more reviews already on this channel. Please take a look at them. They're by Jason Blaine. Well, the book is by Jason Blaine. It's called 45 Days. There is one from Isra Shravenhart, which is called Her Black and Soul. There's one for Kimberly Allerman. There is also one for Paul Lavender. Please check them out. These are great authors, all of them. And if you would like an interview done yourself, please let me know on Facebook or comment on this video down there. It's all about trying to help people get their work out there. Thank you and goodbye for now.